Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Challenge 40 Battle of the Eras Wrap Up Podcast Preview Part 2. I am Brian Cohn. With me, as always, is my co host, Alice. You're Allie, how are you? I remain excited. How are you, Brian? What's going on? I'm very excited. Very excited. I feel like season one is filled with a lot of fun. There was a lot, not a lot of controversy with the picks. I think era two, there's going to be a little more discussion about how do these people find their way here and who? So it's going to be fun. Wow. This from the guy who, but one podcast ago, couldn't keep <laughs> that whose name out of his mouth. That's what makes it exciting. Here we are. We're, we're in Aviv's world. All right. Should we kick it off with Aviv? Should we just get into it? Or do you, you know, I have some general questions, but you want to, gen- let's, let's do Brian's pick. We're in Brian's world. Do you want some general stage setting questions or you want to go right to Aviv and, and chip away at, at the who? No, let's do some general questions. Okay. Um, And then, and then we'll go to, um, and then we'll go to Aviv just because it is, just unbelievable how she's here but let's do some general so nicole uh, caponia says this is the most random era though right <laughs> there are a few lasting positive relationships and while there's history it's not as bonding or cohesive as other eras i'm absolutely pumped though such an assortment with high stakes so general general thoughts yeah general thoughts um definitely a random grouping i think you know it's very much split I would say in three buckets. Um, you have bananas, the the best of the best of the women, and then the men. And it's going to be very interesting to see how these three groups kind of work together and come across. And I just think the other big thing from this era and this casting are the the holes of the casting of the men. Like, who's not here? Obviously, most notably... We, you, you hinted at it from the era one with no Wes. I think not having Wes here is a huge, huge uh, miss for this for this season of this celebration of the show to not have one of its most famous men from the show not on it is huge. And then like the dirty secret, not dirty secret, but the dirty thing missing from this era are like the two biggest, two of the biggest names from this era in, in Kenny and Evan. Like they were this era they dominated this era into like early days of the next era so to not have those three some for good reasons uh, or some for fair reasons and one for like just i don't know why it didn't work out but that's like how this era kind of came about okay well that was a big bummer let me try to change the tune here christine uh, tripati says aside from cara laurel and bananas this era seems most random as far as uh why they were cast here's what i'm gonna say exactly because could you even have Wes on this team and and make it even a team challenge? Like, could you have Emily, Laurel, Cara, Bananas, and another person at their level on this season? Like, mm-hmm. I I don't think so. Like, I don't think I like. There's got to be some like fairness uh, established here. So I think part of the reason that there might be some more randomness or shall I say personality hires rounding out the season is because as you said, it's bananas and some of the greatest women, not just on season 40, but to ever do it like Mm -hmm. of people who are here and are not here. So I really think this is like a sleeper era, not in terms of the show. I mean, these are good seasons, but a sleeper era of um, the cast here. I don't know why I said those were good seasons. You know, for a million dollars, I couldn't just like rough out what seasons 11 through 20 were. Um, But yeah, so I I think this is like kind of the underdogs. I mean, I I have an idea for this, for the name when we get to it at the end, but now I'm going to write down the underdogs because maybe it's crazy to say that Bananas, Emily, Laurel, and Cara would be underdogs, but in terms of like their formation, maybe. Yeah, and I think when this this, uh, cast was announced, I think – we hadn't seen all stars for yet. So like when we saw names like Ryan, Derek and Brandon, knowing they were on all stars Four, and it was like, Oh, and now they're on season 40. I think for Derek, at least it makes a little more sense. Cause I think Derek had obviously his best season era on all stars Four, uh, was very highly talked about, did very well in some of the dailies. And then for Ryan and, and Brandon, you know, they, we're there. Um, and it's, you know, I'm a fan of Ryan. I'm a fan of Brandon. But 
when you're talking about celebrating the show, it is interesting to see them here. Do you even like the emoji movie? Do you have a fan? <laughs> like, how can you say that? First of all, it's like personal. It's like coming from my family to say something about Ryan, though uh, the Kehoe fan club is apparently dwindling. And I, the founding member, well, don't care if I'm the sole remaining member. It's fine. It's mm -hmm. like the Cam Defenders, the Kehoe Defenders. It's okay. Um, but I think like you're sleeping on Brandon a little bit more, given, you know, while he kind of had a uh, burned out fast and bright on all stars he's coming in with some interesting baggage with Kara, and sure. i'm just relieved to see somebody with Kara with baggage that's not just polly or, or laurel so like that's an interesting dynamic for anyone who didn't see all stars four right like Kara relies on we've been friends for eight years brandon hits her with you haven't talked to me in eight years and i'm gonna come for you it blows up in his face but he's hungry and i like that and i think there's a little drama there and I'm excited to see them. Uh, so I'm going to defend the misfits here. Maybe we'll write down misfits also. Again, some of the greatest people to ever do it, the most winning folks on the show, and I'm calling them the misfits. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's go to Aviv, though. Yeah, I mean, it is – it's unbelievable. I, I can't there, – there's a better adjective to use, but for Aviv, who I'm sure is a lovely person, and would be a lot of fun probably to hang out with. It is just unbelievable that she was on one season, was that 15, 17 years ago, whatever it is, wins, never comes back, never does an all stars to like reintroduce herself, and is just boom on season 40, like the celebration of the show. And I, I mean, it makes sense they would want to have winners and do all that, some things, but it's, it is wild that she's here. Like, it is crazy. It would be like, it's like if they did like when they did like winners at war and they just like drop like Fabio in the mix. It's like, here you go. Here's a winner. Like it, it's just crazy that she's here. And, and like, and I don't know how else to describe it. Then it, it is just unbelievable to have her all, only doing one season in her entire show. And she's on this season. It's an unbelievable choice. Fringe Survivor fans be out here like, we would have loved that. Um, Michelle Marshy says, who's Aviv? LOL, see your right memory of her. But Brian, Bill will leave it. <laughs> because, sorry, like, I can't believe it. Um, you know, here's what's fun about it. When you have 40 people you can put on, and again, as you made the point in Era 1, like, once Era 1 happens, those people are reoccurring and filling spots. So in terms of, like, the new people starting, right, it starts reducing, like, especially mm -hmm. in 11 through 20 and people who are eligible to come back um, in terms of their behavior. So it, like, is really cool and fun, I think, to play with a wild card choice. Like, I think Aviv is someone who probably, like, it's surprising she never came back in the 11 to 20 seasons right. after being on Fresh Meat and winning. Um, so to see her brought back so randomly is cool. Like, is there anything more era about it than bringing someone back who's so specifically of this era that she's never played outside of it? Like, that's cool and interesting. So... I, do I think she's long for this world? Maybe not. I don't know if her and Darrell have been in touch as we, we talked about, they were partners on fresh meat and one together. Um, but what a cool, what a cool thing to have done to just bring back that. Like everybody should be the most recognizable person, but wouldn't it be fun if like someone who never got a second chance, just got a second chance. Cause there is no theme. Right. It's not like legends. Love it. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting when she's brought out, like, is like how TJ and like everyone reacts. Like I'm sure there's going to be like, oh look, Aviv's here. That's that's interesting. You think they're going to do 40 solo like clap out? She's going to get like the yada yada montage of like. I don't know. I think she's going to get her own call out. I think I think other people will get the yada yada in like a group. I feel like like who, who what who would she be grouped with? She's not going to be like brought out with like the, like she's not going to be brought out with someone from our different era. She's not going to be brought out with Darrell. I don't. I think. I think if he's gonna get like her own like special spotlight, just because of how wild it is. I'm, I, mean, I can't. I, yeah. Winner pick. I mean, like that's what's that's the funny thing about All Stars is like I'd be very curious to know of somebody who watches the challenge but does not like pay through the paywall of Paramount to get All Stars. People who are challenge only watchers, mm. like how a Jody feels like. 
Howard Kellyanne, even who we haven't seen since Rivals Three. Like there are people not quite like Aviv. I am not. I am absolutely not comparing Kellyanne to Aviv. But like, are there people that did just a couple seasons ten years ago, fifteen years ago, and we never saw again? Yeah, not not on All Stars, but on Challenge Proper. So right. she definitely doesn't have the like name recognition and like fan recall but that's just another word for name recognition mm -hmm. um in the minds of the challenge fans but again like i think like we never just try anything the challenge tries something maybe she'll be the first one eliminated you said this about jody i think it's doubly true for aviv if the sure. other if the other teams want to target someone and the other though now i'm just making no sense kellyanne to me is in bigger danger here kellyanne is possibly aviv's biggest meat shield of someone who doesn't get along with a lot of people who even her allies and all-stars want to cut her. She's pretty mm -hmm. controversial and a loner and she's known as being physically a threat. Could, and Emily Flom, uh, who she been talking to, right? So Emily Schramm, Flom, LOL. <laughs> I was not, like, did she change her name? I don't want to correct. <laughs> Emily Schramm, like, <laughs> like, could Aviv kind of draft behind two of the strongest women who are maybe not as connected and two of the strongest, most well-connected women right? and emerge as the winner, Errors 2, your season 40 champion, undefeated Aviv? Look, if Aviv wins again <laughs> and only plays twice and wins twice and just like rides off into the sunset, like what a story, Brooke. What a story, Brooke. What a story. Put it, get the movie rights. That would be unbelievable. Um, it just... I think the way the challenge usually goes, though, is like, especially in those early votes, it's really just strictly about like, I don't want to cause waves. I'm not going to target Laurel. I'm not going to target Kara. I don't even want to target Emily because like of how much of a beast she is. Maybe you don't even want to target Kellyanne because you're afraid she's going to like murder you in your sleep. So like, let's just go after a V. <laughs> just do that. Okay, you know, it's going to go one of two ways, either how I described or you described. She's <laughs> the first the one out or two, she's winning. Only <laughs> two options. So we're going to have our winner decided maybe by episode two. All right. Uh, now, here is the problem with picking Aviv is like, where do you even go from here? She's not connected at all. But let's go to Kellyanne since we've been talking about her anyway. Real World Down Under, Real World Sydney 2007, currently 38 uh first joined us on the island and and honestly i had no recollection do you remember who her rivals three season 28 partner was rivals three was a cross-gender rivals right Correct. so it would have been a man um who would be kellyanne's rival can i get a hint I don't there's a one percent chance you'd get this but I would have said there's like a negative the thousand percent chance you would get it. It's not. I know. I don't. He hasn't played since. But for some reason, I want to say it's like Dunbar. But I know it's obviously not Dunbar. But it feels like that could have been like a rival. I, I have no idea. It's freaking Car Maria's cousin Jamie, who I would have bet my life never played this game again after winning another yeah. one and done winner. I thought he was a one and done for sure. I didn't realize he had come back. Close. I gaslit myself. I had to read why they were rival. I like I couldn't stop at just writing his name down. I was like, I don't believe this. Like, what was the reason? Effect. What was the reason? They got in one fight, like on Bloodlines, which was really more about two other people. That that was it. And sure. then, like, quote several other fights. There were a lot of Fagazi alliance uh, rivals <laughs> on uh, Rival Story. That was like, unfortunately, the Rivals 3 like killed almost the concept of Rivals because of how quickly they did it at the Rivals 2. Because they were just, they were like, oh, they tweeted at someone. Let's make that a rival. Oh, they like looked at someone weird. That's a rival. Would you guess that Kellyanne has won or not won a season of the challenge? She has not won. I feel like I would have said that she's won because I would have like thought she'd have been on like a winning team in early days. But yeah, you're right. She's not yeah. won. She almost won the island. Very close, I feel like. I think she made I think she was in one of the boats. I think she's even made a couple other finals uh in her day. She like does very well. She's she's not very well liked, but she is very athletic and like does well for herself. Now again, like across this group of of women, let alone on her team, um, it's gonna be might be tough for her for for her to stack up, but she is a very physically fit uh competitor yeah she's a perpetual uh all-stars finalist for sure um it's interesting she 
she, like I forget how the island worked. She didn't make the final. She was eliminated in the last episodes. She was. Oh, not then she must have had her key stolen. Yeah, she had like her whatever. key stolen in the last one. Um, but close, and she made the final in the ruins. So yeah, I mean, I think Kellyanne is a wild card for all the reasons I said that Aviv might have a better chance than Kellyanne. I feel like I really like Kellyanne on TV. People tend to get. I don't know the ick or turned off by her, but maybe like with Car Maria, like their powers can combine of right. people who are normally isolated in their season. Yeah, the 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 biggest thing go, going against Kelly and number one is that Wes isn't here to have someone that would be like looking. What do you do her. for her on All Stars? He's throwing think, her right under the bus. I, I think Wes would. I mean, I, I think Wes would look out for her in this situation at least to have someone who would pretend to look out for her in some regard like have some level of connection to her and then even more so that would i think is going to play a part of how like the downfall of her relationship with john a from from all stars it seemed like they were like pretty close and then that relationship blew up um across across all stars as well so there really is like no one also like like a v that is going to be uh looking out for for kellyanne here Actually, I um, have Darrell, so Kelly has got no one. Let's save. I want to go to. I'm tempted to go to Car Maria and Laurel, but let's save them for the end. Let's just let's just stop at the t- start at the top of the lineup here and go to Derek, Derek C. Uh, the toast of All Stars Four, not because mm-hmm. we really saw it, but because we were told. Um, but definitely performed really, really well. Originally from Real World Cancun, season 22 starts the first season of Cutthroat for him in 2010. Last seen on Challenge Proper and Rivals 2. You want to guess who his rival was? Because this was another one that shocked me. Um, this was same gender, so this would have been a man. Um, was it someone from his own season? It was that not. Oh. It's amazing that Derek would have, been, would have been around longer enough in seasons to pick up a rival. Um, he goes out first. It's um, a rival. I'll give you a hint. It's a rivalry that was made on Battle of the Seasons right before Rivals Two. Could it have been? Was it? Was it? It wasn't like Dustin or something like that, was it? Can I give you another hint? It's not not like Dustin, but it's a person you probably have not thought about since probably 2013. Rack if the brain. Then. Let's see. Was it? Oh, was it Chet? No, he has a more notable ex-ish who's sort of like tangentially a friend of the podcast. I don't know what she's been up to, so I don't want to say that for sure. A notable ex that is tangentially a friend of the podcast. Like a notable ex from like the show? Yes, from his real world season. And she was unsurprisingly a part of this rivalry. In terms of just having a fight. I got nothing. Okay. It's Rob with two B's. Okay. Uh, better known as uh, the better half of did he date or, Marie? Rob and Marie. Yeah. From okay. Real World St. Thomas. <laughs> what did Rob and Derek get in a fight about? I don't know. I, I think maybe I'm confusing events. Like this was the fight that was really more between uh, JD and Marie. And that's Rob. And he spells it with two B's, right? Is he a two yes. B Rob? Yeah, I said Rob with two B's, but okay, I was not listening to my incredible facts. Uh, what are you doing for this podcast if not looking up who Derek <laughs> was rivalry partners with in 2013? Who's not on the season? It doesn't matter. Okay, um, excited where's to Trey? see Derek. Yeah, where's Trey? <laughs> <laughs> Says no one. Um, <laughs> let's. I'm. I am very interested to see what happens with Derek here, coming off of his most successful season of the challenge ever. Um, you know, a year and a half, two years later, but I'm I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, he, obviously, his early, earlier challenge proper seasons didn't go very well. Uh, he made a deep run in making the final All Stars four, and he's going to be kind of relied upon in this group. I mean, given the right circumstance, he's like the second or third best man uh, on this on this group. So I think it's going to be interesting to have someone like Bananas like relying on him and like you. Know, taking him under his wing almost as maybe like a second in command type person um, about how they are going to do. So I think that, like it's going to be very interesting how Derek molds himself into this season with maybe more uh, kind of pressure on him to perform physically. 
yeah, that, that's interesting. Fanfic with bananas there, but we'll see. Because uh, I am curious. I am worried about bananas. I think bananas is going to be, like, integrated maybe with the women. But I worry about Nehemiah. Like, I don't worry about it. I mean, I think I would, like, trust in Nehemiah to kind of rally the rest of the team to, like, go against bananas. Yeah, because I don't I think like they have the best that energy. relationships. Yeah, they yeah. don't really have the best of relationships, so. So it's not a great draw for bananas, but let's let's talk about Derek's uh, real first in command, Ryan Kehoe, one mm -hmm. of my all time faves, forty three, joining us from Fresh Meat. A ton of this this era two cast is from Fresh Meat. Um, originally partnered with Melinda, second team eliminated. A real Aviv story of that he was even brought back at all, frankly, uh, to come on to uh, one, two, three, four more seasons ironically his last se season of challenge proper was also fresh meat fresh meat too um and has made a pretty good like showing in the all-stars uh seasons two and four mostly talking a lot about his personal life and his recovery uh from his addiction so i think he has a lot of heart on the season mm -hmm. he's a great ally to derek you want to talk about aviv or kellyanne not having wes derek and ryan would rather lose, I think, than turn against each other. So the very, very, very strong pairing. I wonder if it would be better suited to have them split up or if the voting right. mechanism will be such that's an advantage to be on the same team, but definitely a little uh, duo to watch. Definitely a duo to watch. Uh, Ryan, you know, is very good socially. He, he's very good at collecting friends, uh, building groups. If he stays out of, a, of an elimination, which he's been able to do in a lot, in a lot of seasons, he actually can make, uh, a pretty deep run, but the second he becomes a target and gets tossed in, it's usually the end of the line for him. Um, so if you can avoid that, he's got a chance. And again, this will one of the biggest things is how this the structure of this season has to play out. Are you competing in elimination against your fellow era? Like if he is to do that, then maybe he's got a shot, maybe against some of the guys here. If he has to go up against maybe some of the men from like era one or even era three, four, like that's maybe a tougher draw. So you know, the structure of the show. Uh, will play a big factor in the in the length of uh, Ryan Kehoe this season. Let's talk about um, the tenderoni. You don't have Wes, but you do have Real World Austin representation from 2005. Nehemiah Clark, uh, currently 38. You sounded like you were ready to go. I was because I'm very excited to have him back on uh, on proper. Like if you, if we if you want to imagine All Stars as like the minor leagues, like he more than almost anyone earn like the promotion back up to the big club. And it's uh very exciting to have him here uh in this in this group because he's I feel like he's had kind of a bad luck draw through his challenge proper years. Um and he started to kind of rectify that a little bit on, on All Stars making a deep run there. And I think even even more so than Derek, I think Nehemiah has a chance to really rally a good coalition and be a very strong force uh both as a physical player maybe even as a social player if he can kind of get get some people behind him because that's what he was able to do in all stars and i think he's got a chance to do it here and he he's like a, a sleeper to make a pretty deep run um if some of like the stronger male egos kind of go against each other nehemiah has a chance to stack up pretty well against a lot of them and, and really can make a deep run here I think, again, depending on the format, this era's tribe, era's team, is an amazing draw for Nehemiah. Like, no one that I'm able to, like, really draw, like, solid lines as opposed to dotted lines for him. But I think being on sort of, like, a disconnected team, he's really prepared to kind of, like, close those gaps and make those yep. end roads. Um I think he's someone I talked a lot about this with Mike on the survivor casting context with millennials Gen X, but I'm really looking for people who want to be here, who didn't have to get a really negotiated appearance. Like I hope Nehemiah is getting paid as much, if not right. more than anybody here, but he's answering that call. And I think he he's hungry for it. And he's somebody who could, like you were saying, continue on on challenge proper after this and not just be like an, Oh, that was cute but now you're back to all stars at, yeah. or not at all. Um, he's somebody who, who can and should be competing at the challenge proper level. So yeah. I, I think this is, this could be a season. This could be a season. Yeah. yeah. And as great as it would have been for him to have West there as just like another ally, like Wes, obviously just his presence, like overshadows Nehemiah. So like the fact that he's not there, like this gives Nehemiah the chance to really shine in that, in that spot. So, and I think he's obviously, he's not going to be shy to like take it. So I think 
it's it's shaping up for him to do very very well and i'm sure this is the absolute kiss of death and he'll be like the first one out but it just feels like he's got a really good chance to like make a a strong run someone i think who's got a similar spirit as nehemiah i think i kind of said this about him already to me is brandon let's go to him also from fresh meat um 40 years old uh, we learned a lot about him in All Stars, like married, divorce, kids, job, whatever. Um, oh, but um, yeah, he's someone I think also. He started on Fresh Meat Two in 2010. We last saw him on our first season, Free Agents, hmm. 2014. I wonder if he was already eliminated before we started. We started Probably. like halfway through, or yeah. or not. Um, he doesn't maybe. usually make it much past halfway through seasons, so I, th- I think it's a fair bet. <laughs> unclear but um i think he's someone also who is gonna like really like kind of recognize this opportunity maybe in the aviv camp also and he's someone who really tried to make big moves on all stars four Mm -hmm. it blew up in his face but the spirit's there i think again if if the teams are working together even if just at the beginning there's some opportunity to repair between car and brandon we'll see what happens there but Again, I think there's like a nice little army that could be built between Nehemiah, Brandon, Ryan, and Derek of of misfits against mm-hmm. the big man bananas. So it's kind of cool. When you look at the season like this, it's like kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm buying what you're selling about the dynamics of this this era being one of the more interesting ones, is just how it's kind of shaken out. And Brandon, he I mean, he he's got a lot of heart. That is for sure. And he also has, has had a lot of bad luck. He's just been that guy that, unfortunately, has just been tossed into a lot of eliminations. I think in cutthroat, he won a lot of them and then eventually kind of got knocked out. But he made a – I think he won like three or four. But he's kind of been that guy that's been on the outs, and there's no real clear sign that he would be on the outs within this group. So it would be fun to see Brandon in a position of power because that's something we've really never never seen from him amongst any level of a season. Totally. Um, all right, let's go to the big man. Let's talk about bananas. We talked about the rest of the men on the season. Um, again, needs no introduction, but we'll give him one season uh, 42 years old. Originally hails from real world Key West in 2006, which is that Marie and Rob season two. Key West. No, was they that did, Key West uh, like Saint, the second no, time? Was, uh, oh, St. Thomas. St. Thomas. St. Thomas. Okay. Sorry. I was like, that seems insane. And it is. This is bananas. 22nd season. Uh, almost unbelievably started in 2006 in the duel, had a tough outing <laughs> short list, say the least. and then zips through to make the final in season 38 rider dies uh, seven rings. What else do we even have to say? Yeah. I think the interesting part with him amongst like the obvious is Obviously, I think he started his podcast before that, but he's been very much more so like deep in the podcast space of having a lot of the people on from like the new era. Um, so I think he's almost built more of like a roster of connections than he's had in a while going in. Like he really has like built some level of bond or friendships or, or whatever between obviously he's had it from like the old era, but like when you look at like the new era people, he's had that chance to like build that with them so i think he's if he's not going to have the line structure within this era i think he's going to have to utilize it from some of the outside eras um and if there's like a sabot like if he's able to like sabotage his own team or, or i don't know how whatever the structure is like he'll he'll be willing to do whatever he needs to do and i think he can rely on some of the people from outside his era to do so so i think that's going to be an interesting part of how his like podcasting space has kind of opened things up for him a little bit it's interesting because while I do think sort of the people who are connected to bananas, who want to be connected to bananas because the cachet of being connected to bananas and the future benefit of being connected to bananas. I think that's always been there with or without the podcast, just because of like who he is on the challenge. But I think Johnny is one of the people, one of the many people, but one of the key people that I think openly talks about, like I show up, here and then i have these connections and with the exception of a few actual friends i don't really talk to anybody when i get home like i i that's at least my impression Mm -hmm. maybe that's totally off and so perhaps extending the challenge job to the podcast has forced him to kind of like continue to do more of the gameplay throughout especially since he hasn't been on 
in what a season i mean nobody was on because it was the nobody in these eras was on the last season so that doesn't really matter but um yeah it, it, it will be an interesting point to see how that plays out although i'm sure cross era alliances are going to matter i don't think any of these people are really in that demo for him did he do all stars coverage maybe he interviewed all these people i think he did yeah okay. i think he's covered like everything yeah um, it will be interesting to see bananas with the Laurel and Kara of it all. Um, but before we get to Laurel and Kara, let's talk about the person I think you are the most excited to see back across any of the eras. I think I don't want to speak for you. I think a lot of people are the most excited to see Emily back. Uh, she's one of the, I think, bigger gets bigger surprises for season 40. Yeah, very excited to have her back. Obviously, we didn't think we would get her back, maybe for like, you know, fair reasons of some of the things that she's done uh in her past but i mean the challenge has brought back other people for doing in your opinion not your opinion in general opinion maybe worse things or less things compared to her <laughs> so it's um it, it's a fluid situation for what they you know ban people from the show so uh it's you know for, for whatever reason emily was one of, one of the people that decided to unban um if she had a ban on her to begin with but she's back she was I mean, if you look at her stats, like maybe like the best stats of any person that's ever been on the show before. Like she's, I think it's three seasons, a win, two finals. Obviously, that means no elimination losses, six or seven elimination wins. The one caveat that'll be very interesting to see how it plays out is she competed and dominated in an era where the female crop was very much top heavy. Like, you know, one of the biggest things we've seen shift over the years is the depth. Uh, of the the talent pool for the women competitive like competitively uh in the recent years and when emily was on it you know there would be like three maybe four women you could think of that maybe could win a season at that point now you look down this crop there's five six seven eight women uh at least that you could see oh they could probably win the season so like that's gonna be very interesting to see how she does compete against some of those other some of those other women but there's no reason to think she can't do it it's, as similar to rachel i think she's i'm sure she has a fitness app crossfit at the at the wazoo so it's gonna be very very fun to have her in the mix yeah that's what i was gonna say about emily like as opposed to somebody who maybe like has taken a less athletic lifestyle right in the pause like she's only cranked it up like she does fitness professionally so in terms of like where she stands in physical fitness or capability amongst the women i, I you know I think it, it favors her. She's uh, yeah, she's five and zero in elimination, but still like insane, insane stats. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, like I almost feel like Emily probably declined a few times more than she's unbanned for forty, mm. but that's just me speculating of like how they cast the show. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see if and how that's addressed because that was very much addressed on television. I think there's also a lot of bans that have happened like off screen where right. like they'll edit Camilla out, they'll edit Ayana out, they'll edit like some of the more controversial things. Uh, Emily's situation was not no. edited. So uh, it will, it's more like J the Jordan and Naya space. So we'll see how that um, gets treated as we go. Um, but mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the biggest rivals, right? The biggest rivals on this, on this, uh, probably season not just this era uh in this era especially in general but especially coming off of all stars four let's talk about Kara and laurel dealer's choice brian where do you want to go first i mean i feel like we almost have to talk to them talk about them as like a duo because they they just sure. have been like a duo the whole time and it's i love that they had all stars four to have this but right before this because there was just so much unresolved i feel like we didn't really know where any of them st stood between them. There was a lot of things they had to like discuss and fight about and work through. And I'm glad that a lot of that happened on All Stars Four. And now it's like they're ratcheting it back up, especially with the way that season ended with Laurel getting the win, just edging out Kara, like some controversy a little bit. I'm sure in Kara's head as to like you know how she how she got the win. It's also very apropos that All Stars Four ends, Laurel wins, Kara's coming around, and Laurel's like, "Oh, I wish we could be working together on a season. Let's let's pair up." notoriously uh laurel the champion of teamwork and partnerships as she uh famously stood best in uh in all stars four now gets the opportunity to do so uh working with Kara again so i think it, it's just another 
it's another chapter in the great storybook that is Laurel and uh, and Kara here. So the only thing I'm curious about is I think it's optimistic to feel like Laurel and Carr resolved everything on All Stars oh, no, no, 4. No, no, definitely not. But but like I think there's a lot, you know, you could tell me that Carr didn't watch All Stars 4 and I'd believe you and she's going to come in without any of this. But I think they both perhaps but definitely Kara have a reason to be even angrier coming out of All Stars 4 after watching it air if they've watched it air because Laurel, I think, orchestrated a lot more of the attacks against Kara, and I don't know how open that was, or, like, she would make it seem like she was with her, but then she was, like, really with Cam and Kara and the Cam thing. So I'm not, like, quite sure where that's at. I also think, like, Nicole and Laurel's stuff had a lot to do with the issues between Kara and Laurel. So maybe Laurel's kind of coming here hat in hand after the way the Nicole stuff blew up in her face and Kara was kind of right. Maybe you're returning to that friend who tried to warn you. Just a lot of, like, loose threads here that I'm interested to see tie up. But we've seen some of the biggest rivals in history, right? Like, Bananas and Wes, like, work together. So maybe this is the time where they say... Oh, jump scare. To, to not I realize I had face. this picture up the whole time. Um, no, but like, uh, you know, maybe it's it's time for them to bury the hatchet. Maybe this will bring them closer uh, to really mm -hmm. working together. Um, a, a milestone for Car. I just want to shout out 15th season, uh, both coming from Fresh Meat in 2010. Um, Kara definitely has more of like a Cinderella story for any new viewers. I mean, we've probably talked about this in All Stars 4, but she was first eliminated from Fresh Meat 2 with Darrell, uh, comes back to make finals in her next two seasons that she's on, has an unbelievable elimination record. Both Laurel and Kara have unbelievable elimination records. 13 and 6 for Kara, 10 and 3 for Laurel. Um, yeah, just like two of the greatest uh, women, both characters and competitors mm -hmm. in the challenge. So it'd be very interesting to see if they can finally, finally team up. I think car, I mean, Permanently. I think it's still active. It's like a, t a eight, nine, 10 uh, season streak of making finals. So it'd be interesting to see if that could uh, continue here. Cause that's what she I does. Think she goes up and mix finals. I don't know about invasion of the champ. One, two, three, four, five. I think five is the streak. Okay, then then it must be like nine of ten or something like that. Then, yeah, one, two, three, four, something like that. Like seven of nine. Um, don't at me if this is wrong. I don't care. Uh, look how hard I tried. Okay, so that is everyone. I'm afraid we pulled a Kyle and like forgot to talk about someone. But no, we got everyone. Say la vie. I don't um, think we talked about Aviv though. Yeah. <laughs> um. We have a lot of name suggestions, and I've oh, written great. some down. But first, who's missing? Let's go back to the slideshow. Ooh, let's go back. Um, thank you again to Stuart for preparing this. Unbelievable. I will also say, before I saw these charts, I was like back in the day being like, ChatGPT, can you make a list of all the contestants who appeared for the first time? They could not. AI could not do what Stuart wow. did, or at least me behind the functionality could not do it. Um, so as you said, still a lot of people who have – had to, oh no, sorry, I was looking in the wrong column. Way more people than amount of wins, people with wins has dropped by like a third, two thirds. Yeah. <laughs> yes, big drop off. I, I, so bef I think it was like two months ago or something when the cast was first announced. I did a uh, again shout out our free agent friends. We did a draft of the people that were left off the the cast who who would be uh, who should be um, put on the top three picks all from this era. Uh, Wes, Evelyn, Paula were like the first one, two, three, in some order. Um, you should have let me like guess because those are the first three I have written down. I figured it was pretty obvious. So, I, yeah, I didn't feel like. Wow. I mean, I had you guess Derek's rivals partner, and I thought that I know, was, that was also obvious. also very obvious also. But, yeah, I mean, those are like the biggest names that stand out. And there's obviously names that are that stand out that are not on for, for different reasons that represent the show in different ways. Um, but. There are a lot of even beyond that. There are some other fun names in this in this mix that um, would be a lot would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, I think Sarah Rice, uh, someone would have been yep. interesting to see back on a team with Bananas after the that you know the money steal. I think Tyler, 
Uh, again, it's all related to bananas. The reason bananas goes home uh, early on his first season, um, MJ and kind of all stars uh, nostalgia. I think for Tyler, almost interesting. As much as All Stars was great and they boosted a lot of people up, I think All Stars knocked Tyler out mm. of this. I think if Tyler had never even been on All Stars or just did one season, like I think I came away from Tyler's second All Stars appearance being like, I think we're good. I think we're, I think I'm okay. I don't need to see Tyler again. Um, I'm going back to the cast. I mean, if you replaced everyone besides Nehemiah, anyone besides Bananas and Nehemiah with Tyler, I would be like. It's great that Tyler's here. But yeah. maybe that says more about the rest of the cast. Yeah. I, I think, <laughs> uh, amazingly, even as strong as like the women crop is from this era, there even are other names. Like you said, Sarah. I would even love to see Teresa in this mix. I think she's been such a, a, a staple when she first got on of like creating a lot of interesting drama. She's nearly won a couple times. She created a lot of interesting fights and been a, a very strong competitor. She would have been a lot of fun to have. I've always been a big fan of Jen with two ends. I think she's like <laughs> kind of like the Katie Doyle of this era. So like having her in the mix would have been kind of a lot of fun too. Yeah. I also had Tori, which we, who we already talked about Tori Hall. She actually appears on this era, not era one. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to DM. Obviously, DM passed away and is not eligible here, but uh, you know, it, it undoubtedly belongs in the conversation in terms of a celebration of season forty and and this era particularly of the challenge. So, totally. kind of heartbreaking. I'm glad she's on this list that that Stuart made. Um, yeah, but it, it not as many where like if you like in era one, I was like if you deleted everybody they picked, you could have. 15 more people i think there's a couple substitutions you can make on the margins mm -hmm. but i kind of see why aviv is is picked <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah i i think so i mean i think i think there's some women here that could have easily jumped like again i think Ther like Teresa, sarah for sure i feel like would be uh making much more sense over aviv. i wouldn't but, be surprised you know what? could be fun Sarah has to say no and get asked, like at least an 100%. interest call. And I think 100%. she's in the no camp. I think she's probably in the same like Susie no camp. Um, so who I'm knows sure Paula and Evelyn, although Evelyn, I feel like is completely off the grid. I don't know if anyone knows where she is, but I'm, I'm sure Paula also said no. Um, all right, let's talk about the names. Uh, I'll read the, the contributed names from the list. Then I'll give you my names. We'll see where we come out. So KT Kelly says, I don't know why the first thought I had was the it's not me. It's you era. Jacob Rabant says the men are bananas and bums while the women are bad blood plus Aviv. Christine Chaprevi says name for this group would be the golden era for me. This is my favorite era of the challenge. It is the perfect mix of when the challenge started going away from carnival games to more challenging, but not so challenging that your favorite real world cast member had a shot. Um, it's oh so it's not so challenging that your favorite real world cast member like, still had a shot. It also still maintained that old school reality TV feel as opposed to the scripted confessionals in stage party nights of today. Ooh, drag era for Josh Lemur says, I tried to think of a name for the show might actually use. It's easy to come up with several of them for one and four, but tough for two and three. Best I can think of for two is teenage dream, even though a lot are from uh, 11, 12 and 20. Willie Tannenbaum says, I think this group should be called the angsty teens since it's 11 to 20. And Richard Cahren says, Fogies, the stars from this era either can't come or won't come. So we're what's left era. <laughs> I like angsty teens. That's fun. Although angsty is a tough word to say. At least okay. I think like misfits really fits here. But I'm going to be calling them with or without the crowd. I don't need the crowd. You'll, you'll. You'll join me eventually. I'm calling them still meat. Cause so many of them still are from meat. fresh meat and they're just, they're just still meat. You know, <laughs> like I was trying to think of what's like middle, not fresh, but like still meat. So mm -hmm. I'm calling them meat. What are you calling them, Ryan? I mean, I think the, like the fresh meat era makes sense. Cause the, again, like a lot of these people either originated from a fresh meat or maybe made their name from a fresh meat or arguably uh, fresh meat now. <laughs> right. That's also very true. I, but angst 18 is something that, because like, I do feel like there's a lot of angst in this group. I think that it's a good way to almost describe Kara and Laurel's like relationship is a lot of like angsty. They, a lot of people want to make a name for themselves. It's like a little angsty. I like the I, I, angst 18 is fun. If I can figure out like not fumble over angsty, I'm going to try to do that. 
All right. So that's the working title for Brian. Um, I think that's it. That is it. That's era two. We'll be back for era three coming next week. Until then, you can subscribe. Wrap his website.com slash challenge feed. Hit the bell to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter, Colin Brian underscore. TikTok, challenge wrap ups. And you. Can't follow me anywhere besides the Facebook group. Check out NGOG, New Girl Old Guy. Um, and uh, I guess still fresh this week. Check out, still meet. Check out uh, my Survivor podcast with Mike Bloom. And I think we we should talk about the podcast we're doing with Mike Bloom. I think that will have aired or will be airing. I think it's appropriate to plug. Ours? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I thought that you, I thought you keep like, forgetting about. I thought you meant like the Challenge Zero podcast, but I don't think that's going to air. Okay, so this. Brian and I will be on with uh, a great panel, um, including Mike Bloom, casting Survivor Eras. Um, so it'll be Survivor based, but check us out there. Yes. The crossover we love. Crossover everyone was asking for. Hundred percent. Check that out. Until I next believe- time. When we were asked about that, I said to Rob, if you change your mind but don't want to say it to our face, you could just text me. So maybe we won't be on. Maybe we're like projecting from the future. We won't be on. But as of this moment, we will be. And it will be in existence. Check us out there. Until next time for Era 3 and then eventually Era 4. Have a good one.